Hello, normally at this point, me and my colleagues, we would take you on a tour here at ETA for you to see the latest progress of this amazing project. But you can tell by my mask that the circumstances are slightly different this year. Just to show my face so you know who is talking to you, my name is Kirsten Haupt, I work here at ETA for the communication section and I'm going to take you on a virtual tour. So what we'll do is we'll go on the work site, I will meet some of uh, my colleagues, the experts, here on site, who will tell us more about all the different facets of the project. So come along with me and we are taking you on a tour. Can you hear that noise in the air, that hum in the air that's coming from the electricity around me here? I am at the big electrical switch out of ETA. This is where we are going to get the electricity from for ETA. This is how we're going to feed the beast. And I'm going to meet a colleague in a moment who's going to tell us a lot more about this entire setup here. Hi, Joel. Hello. Nice to meet you again. Yes. Uh, yeah, we are in this incredible place here, actually. Ah, yes. I mean, it's a really impressive. The, 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 highest, the highest voltage of ITER project. Ah, yeah, the electrical <laughs> switch out of, uh, of yes. ITER, right? Yes, yes. And so uh, tell us a bit about it. Yes, so this is the, the main substation of the ITER project, so where all the electricity is coming from for the rest of the project. And this is the interconnection with the grid, with the French grid operator. So we are connected at 400 kilovolt, which is the highest voltage available in France. And uh, so this is the biggest uh, electrical switch yard that we can find in a research facility uh, in France uh, nowadays. So the substation components, the main components, so from the grid connection, so we have the line disconnector and the breakers. The breakers are the T-shape that we can see here. And this component is mainly uh, the protection of the transformers that we can see here. And these transformers are to downstream the voltage from 400 kilovolt a voltage that can be used by the main system. So here the transformers are 400 kilovolt, 20 kilovolt at the secondary. And this is the main voltage, 20 kilovolt, to distribute the power all over the uh, ITER site. This is the part that we call SSEN substation, so steady state electrical network. And it's the network that will power all the auxiliaries of the ITER project. And this substation cannot be interrupted at any time, even for maintenance. So this is why we have four transformers in parallel and we can stop one of the four for maintenance and keeping 100% of the capability of the electrical distribution. So this is a, a redundant design base for the uh, substation because we need to ensure and to offer very high reliability of the electrical power for the uh, ITER project. So in the metallic structure that are supporting the overhead lines, the 400 kilovolt, that are the cables that are connected to the glass insulator, you can see above a cable that is connecting the different metallic structure. So in case of lightning, it's this cable that will protect all the components be below. The density of lightning uh, event, in particular in the summertime, it's very important. So in terms of environmental protection for industrial facilities and the research facilities like ITER, it's one of the key points for the, for, for the protection of the components. So here we are in the pulse substation which is really related to uh, fusion process uh, because the main client of this uh, electrical distribution are the converter for the magnetic field and the heating and current drive system that will heat the plasma during uh, the pulse operation. The main challenge of this uh, part of the electrical network is to absorb and to keep the stability of the network despite the pulse loads and the fast transient that we will have on this network. Indeed, the heating and ground drive and converters, they are very uh, specific loads, not uh, very linear, and they will induce huge perturbation and huge disturbance on the network. Here, all the components are designed and they are sized in order to withstand all this uh, interference and variation on the, on the electrical distribution. 
all these components are provided in kind by the different domestic agencies, in particular the Pulse electrical distribution, this substation, all the components are coming from uh, China, different to the steady state electrical substation where this part was delivered by USDA. The main problem that we have in ITER today, we have to face a very dusty environment because the work site is still in construction and this dust is putting on the insulator and we have to clean on a regular basis to avoid to hark and to have faults in this, uh, in this system. This uh, PPM substation has been uh, finalized uh, last year. It was totally tested, what we call commissioning. So all the transformers were energized and uh, connected uh, to the grid. However, we are finishing the secondary part in the other side. The test and commissioning are uh, starting and we would be ready by the uh, end of the year to supply the first client that will be the converters in order to perform the uh, converter commissioning side. Hello, my name is uh, Federico Fortunato. I'm uh, working in uh, FADE division as responsible of uh, installation of the ACDC converter and DC bus bar in this building and in the twin building on the other side. So here we are in building 33 and the twin is 32 where are installed all the AC-DC converter and the big DC bus bar to feed the superconductive magnets. Here you can see the DC bus bar supplied by Russian DA that feed the superconductive magnets in the tokamak. The, these bus bar are sized to carry a very high current up to 70 kilo amperes. So here you can see the bus bar that start from the DC converter, the CDC converter and arrive up to the tokamak. Here, this is a, a PF uh, ACDC converter. So here you have the converter bridges and uh, on this side you have the coil and the connection to the DC bus bar. This uh, PF converter are supplied by China DA we have 14 similar components like this to be installed all in the building. These are the, the inductance that smooth the current that go to the superconductive magnets. Here is the inductance. These are the bus bar that connect the, the bridge to the, to, the, to the coil up to the DC disconnector. This is the disconnector that uh, switch off the, the AC-DC converter from the bus bar. They disconnect the DC converter from the bus bar. All this equipment that are you seeing here are supplied by China DA. So here we have the connection between the AC-DC converter and the, and the Russian bus bar. Here we are connecting China with Russia. Here, for example, we have the cooling water collector. And uh, here there are the cooling water pipe that run below that connect Russia with India. I have worked in several uh, facility and uh, electrical facility, but this one is real, the, the first of a kind. There is nothing else identical in the world. The installed power in building 32 and 33 is about uh, 2 giga vo vo uh, volt ampere. So imagine that one EPR is one gigavolt ampere. So here we have two EPR installed inside in terms of installed power. So it's a huge amount and you don't have something similar in the world. So it's important to note that uh, during the operation, this building will not, will not be allowed to have any people inside this building. <clears throat> due to the fact that we will have a very high current and very high magnetic field in this building. So no one will be authorized to stay inside during the operation. We are working now to manage the phase of the commissioning of the, all the PF because during commissioning we cannot avoid to have people inside. So we are working hard with the commissioning team and with safety in order to properly manage this activity that today is planned to start June, July this year.
Now we can move on the other building. Here we are in building 32. This is the PF, uh, PF1. This is the CDC converter for PF1. Here we can enter. This is PF1. This one is, uh, and is coming from China. This one is the CS uh, for coming from Korea. And the last one, this one is the, is the AC-DC converter for PF6. This, these are the, a, the converter bridge provided by China DA. The DC bus bar connecting the converter bridge to the, to the induction, inductor coils that smooth the current. And uh, here you have the DC disconnector supplied by China DA. The same we have from the Korean DA. These are the converter bridge from Korea, the bus bar from Korea, the, the induction coils from Korea, different technology, and the DC disconnector. So same function, but different technology chosen by the two DAs. These are the biggest bus bar we have installed are for the TF bus bar. These are the biggest and these are the carrying capacity of 70 kilo amps at maximum. So as you can see, this is the installation is completed without the protecting box so that we can see how the connection is done. These are the, the interconnection between two, two bus bar sections. And these are the cooling water system, and these are the, the sensor to monitor the temperature of the joint. Because this, this seems that there is a heavy current, there is a an, an, an very high temperature. The quantity of energy managed here, it's, it's impressive. And uh, the technology, the fact that uh, there are several DAs impacted, uh, so I'm used to say this one is our small tokamak because we are doing um, things with several DAs, etc. And, uh, and after it's, it's, it's uh, an ITER technology because uh, ITER is not only the machine or the equipment inside the machine. Okay, it's more important. But also here we are, we are doing things that are uh, the top of the technology that is now in the world. And there are still space for improvement and we are investigating how to improve. My name is Pierre gavouillard lasser so I am here Deputy Project Manager for the PF Coil and I am pleased to present you the PF building. So this is a very special facility which has been built on the ITER site especially to manufacture this giant coil and we are following different manufacturing steps from winding of the superconducting cable up to the final assembly of the coil. So our PF facility is divided into two main areas. One area which is under the CNIM responsibility where the company will manufacture the double pancakes. So double pancake is part of the PF coil. So they will wind the superconducting cable and impregnate the double pancake. This product will be then handed over to ASG where the company will here stack these double pancakes and prepare the, the final assembly of the coil. So now we will have a look to the PF coil number five, which is the very first coil completed right now in the PF building and which is now ready to be handed over to IO. Hello, Pierre. Ciao, Sandro. So How finally we got it, huh? Yes, Beautiful. yes. Beautiful. Can you yeah. believe that? Completed. Yeah. Completed. It's incredible. So now what is going to happen? Now we are going to lift it now yes, and then are, yeah. moving to the to the frame, right? Yes, there. they are finalizing the preparation for the lifting 
And today, this coil should move to the, to the end of our building and leave the building this week, yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. We started when? In 2017? Yes, 2017. And yes. now, here it is. Yes. Incredible. Very Completed. Nice. Our Very first coil. And then, do you know when it's going to be, I mean, after it's been moved the, to, the, to the frame and yeah. then it's leaving to IO, when it's going to be assembled in the pit? Yes. I heard something about June or whatever? Yes, I think yeah, this year, yeah, this year. I'm not sure then about the final plan, but uh, at least it's ready together with PF6, yes. Beautiful. And how, what is the weight of this? What, about what? So this one, hundred? about 300, uh, 300 tons. Which is not the heaviest. No, the heaviest was PF6. PF6. Yes, yes, for 400. Yeah, but this 100. is much bigger. So good morning, we are on the ETO workstation on this wonderful day and I'm going to show you something really exciting. We are walking towards the Tokamak building, but what we are going to have a look at today is uh, the uh, installation that is going to be built in front of it. And that is going to be the most powerful heating source for ETO, the neutral beam plant. Now I could continue talking a lot about it, but I don't know as much as our expert who's waiting for us there and I'm going to take it to him. He, his name is Chanjamuli Rotti, and he's going to give you all the details that we need to know about it. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you? Hi, it's you? great that you have time for us. My name is Chandramoli Rotti. I'm the section leader for neutral beams at ITER. I would say that ITER neutral beams project is uh, a large project within ITER project, and the partners here are uh, Europe, India, and Japan and uh, the Consorcio RFX, the host for the nuclear beam test facility. Now I'm going to describe what we are doing here uh, in ITER. You could see here the openings. These openings are basically for the accommodating the transmission lines for the power supplies, and the power supplies will come around in this area for this. And uh, behind this wall, we will, we will have the uh, ITER neutral beam injectors built and this power will be transmitted from these power supplies to ITER through this transmission line through this wall. ITER neutral beam uses the negative beam technology. The negative beam technology has already been used earlier, but uh, for ITER purpose, we need a large uh, beam source, which has not been built earlier. And uh, this has to be built first and then tested. And for the purpose, we have a neutral beam test facility at Consorcio RFX Padua and the, at NBTF facility Padua we will build the neutral beam of the eater size and test it for its purpose and then we will translate this technology uh, to eater uh, to build eater neutral beams. You see behind me this big building here, we are now at a very interesting point of our tour. That is the water cooling tower. And I'm going to meet a colleague, Alfonso Marquez. He's going to tell us more about it. Hi, Alfonso. Hello, Hi. Nice to see you again. Yeah, likewise. So we are now just in front of the cooling towers of the ITER project. So here is where sooner or later most of the heat produced by the ITER reactor will come up. So here we will cool practically the 1,200 megawatts that ITER project will generate. As you know, ITER project won't generate electricity. We have to dissipate to the atmosphere all this heat. Here are mainly the, the pipes that feed the, the cooling tower. Mm -hmm. Most of this power will come below our feet in a buffer tank that we have. This is what we call the hot basin. Here we will store most of this uh, peak of power that will be generated in the reactor, which will be cooled in a more average way in the cooling towers. We achieve a design of these cooling towers, which is smaller and more compact than it will be if we will have to cool all this peak power from the plasma, which is 1,200 megawatts. Instead, we have only 500 megawatts for these uh, cooling towers. 
So what you see here are the vertical turbine pumps, which are in charge of circulating the water either from the basin that we have below our feet to the cooling towers or between this basin and the heat exchangers. So these vertical turbine pumps, each of them has a capacity of 1,300 kilograms per second of flow rate in average. We have three types of pump. Each one of them is dedicated to one of the three circuits of cooling that we have in this plant. One of them is dedicated to the Tokamak cooling water system and is exclusively devoted to cool the Tokamak cooling water system. There is a second cooling circuit for which we have four pumps, which is devoted to cool the component cooling water system, which attends many of the smaller services of the heater plant. Finally, we have the circulating pumps for the heat rejection system, three of them which are in charge of taking the hot water from the basin below our feet and moving it to the cooling towers. This cooling water plant is practically finished. We are at 85% of construction progress. This means that for the circuits and the loops which are dedicated to the cooling of the cryo plant, we are done. This is finished. We are just closing some minor defects and some minor punch items open and this will be ready for commissioning on the 3rd of May. So very soon, this means once the plant is commissioned, we will be able to give cooling water to cryo plant and then at that time we can start cryo plant commissioning end of the summer. There is one part of this plant which is remaining to be built, which is the one dedicated to cool the Tokamak cooling water system which represent above 50% of the total construction plan, but this is foreseen to be finished as well end of this year. Hey, welcome here uh, in front of the cryo plant. My name is David Griot. I'm heading the cryogenic team and working for ITER organization. Since three years from now, we are constructing this plant that will serve and provide the coolants to our main internal clients, which are the cryogenic pumping system of the ITER Tokamak, the superconducting magnets, as well as uh, the thermal shield systems. So very soon after this summer, we'll start to fill those big uh, gaseous helium tank in order to start the pre-commissioning and commissioning activities of the full uh, system uh, that will start during the, the autumns. Let's go inside now the plant and have a look on it. So we are here into the machinery rooms of the cryo plant, which is hosting the machines, what we call the compressors, that are running and processing, compressing the helium that is later to be liquefied uh, in order to cool the tokamak system. This plant will more or less uh, liquefy 12,000 liters per hour of helium and is being to be uh, tested soon. Uh, already we are uh, proceeding with some leak testing or also instrumentation and control uh, testing in order to be ready with the commissioning step that is to be started by September this year. Since helium is a rare gas uh, and which is very costly, we cannot lose any vapor, means everything is collected in those balloons that will inflate and uh, with some compressor we'll suck those balloons in order to recover the helium properly and to re-inject it in, uh, into the cycle. We are here in the, in the other part of the building which is hosting what we call the helium cold boxes which aims is to cool the helium which is compressed by the compressor where we were just before and after the expansion, then the helium is cooled and then liquefied in those vacuum enclosures, which are behind of me, before to be sent to the tokamak system. We have started to install those systems three years ago, and we are now very close to complete their installation and to start their, their uh, commissioning uh, in, the, in the coming months. Uh, basically, by September, we'll uh, start to, uh, to cool down those systems. The next point of our tour is diagnostics. As ITER is a big scientific experiment, diagnostics will play a very big role. And I'm just going to meet the man who can tell us all about it. 
Mike. Hi, Hello, Mike. Hello, how are you? Nice today? to nice see nice you to again. See you. Hi. So, Welcome. can and you take us on a tour inside it, the diagnostics building? It will be my and, pleasure. And tell shall us we, what's happening there. Yes, shall we go? Yes, let's go. It's already it's, ch it's changed so much. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I haven't been here for a long time. And all those doors are all running very nicely now. Ah, I love them, yeah. I was and so basically, a key item is to know what is going on inside ITER. I in fact, diagnostics are the eyes and ears of ITER. If you do not have a way of taking the signals out, we have no way of knowing what's going on inside ITER. So why don't we go and have a look at the diagnostics building? It's right, uh, right next door. Excellent. And you can explain us what's going to happen there, what we can expect, and what the situation is there right now. Excellent. We have to take the signals from the inside of the tokamak to the outside of the tokamak. And the question is, how do you do that? So the first part is, we take them through the boundary of the tokamak from the vacuum side of the tokamak to the air side of the tokamak. And now we're obviously in the air side of the tokamak. And then we take the signals out through the bio shield, then many of them go along uh, to where I am standing now, they will be residing, and then wires of different types, electrical wires, optical paths, microwave waveguides, and uh, optical fibers uh, will take the signals from here to the, to the outside, which is called the diagnostic hall. So I showed you on the other side where the diagnostics come out of the tokamak. Now we're in what's called the diagnostic hall. You know, we have to do things in a sequence. It is like a huge jigsaw puzzle and everything has to go in, in a certain order. And you know, some of the things we have to deliver, we have to do them at a particular time, even though the whole system is not needed at the beginning. We have to have some bits of it in early. And when everything is finished, how do we have to imagine this place uh, to work like? How is it going to look like? How is it going to work? So th there will be many, um, many, let's say, rooms separated by a, a, a special mesh. And the different diagnostics will be in those rooms. And the people who are in charge of those diagnostics will have a code access to that area. And they will be authorized to make changes, only, only those people. And then you will see, for example, here, you may have some cubicles, some lasers, some optical spectrometers, some spectrometers, some microwave equipment, and other types of equipment. And this, this equipment will be taking the signals that come over from there down to here, and then they will send it onto the computer system where you will have people in the control room looking at the data and, and processing it. So I am now at the last stop of our tour, and where we are here now is the assembly hall. This is the place where all the components of the ITER machine are coming together and are being pre-assembled to be put later into the Tokamak pit. So first you will hear from my colleague Chang Ho Choi about all the setups that you might see in the background here in the assembly hall. And then we save the best for last. We take you into the holiest of holy, into our cathedral, into the Tokamak pit, where my colleague Jens Reich is going to tell you what is going to happen there where the future fusion machine is going to be. So I'm going to leave you now and I wish you a lot of fun with the last bit of our tour. Bye bye. I'm Chang Choi, sector module and the delivery uh, assembly division header. And uh, behind of me, you can see the one major sub assembly tool of the, the uh, sector thermal shield and the, uh, two tear coil assembled by the, this uh, sub-assembly tool. And uh, you can see the vacuum vessel is here and the thermal shield is ready to sub-assemble. It will be done in next uh, the, uh, weeks. Uh, and all of them are delivered from the Korea and uh, now ready for sub-assembling uh, for the, each of them. And uh, after this uh, sub-assembly with the vacuum vessel and the thermal shield, we will uh, sub-assemble with uh, the two TF coils. One TF coil is uh, ready for sub-assembly in the outside of the, this building. And uh, the, uh, the other one is uh, soon will come here. And after that, 
all sub-assembly will be completed in September and going to the pit in the September. That's the current plan and the mostly you can achieve it. Let me introduce the vacuum vessel. The vacuum vessel is height is around 13 meters, width is around 7 meters, another toroidal width is 7 meters as well, and total weight is 400 tons. My name is Jens Reich and I'm uh, so division head of X vessel delivery and assembly. Sounds complicated, it's not so complicated. It's called EVDA and it's one of the both divisions which are in charge of this uh, assembly of the Tokamak machine. What we have seen today is the lifting of the PF6 coil. It's a fusion for energy delivery to I.O. It's a PF6 coil, the first superconducting magnet coil which is coming into the pit on temporary supports. And it was just lifted down. And as you can see here, it's uh, not finally landed on the temporary supports. There's a few minutes necessary to have the final assessment from metrology until it is landed uh, so finally on the supports and then, of course, served and preserved until the next components are coming into the pit. So it's, of course, a major achievement again this day. Uh, what I said, it's the uh, so first superconducting magnet coil in the pit, but it's not the first major component. So we have, of course, the pit filled already with the cryostat base, the cryostat cylinder, and the thermal shield cylinders. And this is today the fourth major lifting the TAC-1 contractor is conducting for us with us together and it's of course a major achievement and uh, so we are very proud of that of course together so to have this achieved again in tight tolerances in time of course and of course in the precision which is necessary according to the precision of the positioning of this coil it is uh, to be mentioned that we have flexible flexible supports uh, so underneath these are temporary supports which were tested beforehand and they have an alignment capacity in ranges of plus minus 40 millimeters in X and Y and in, in Z as well, in the height as well. And with that it is allowing us to uh, drive these temporary supports into this position which is needed to meet exactly the position of the PF coil.